And joining us now in our book talk segment, great to welcome New York Times best-selling author of uh, many types of uh, books, particularly uh, this one we're going to talk about today. It's a brand new edition of one of his Paul Madriani series. It's called The Enemy Inside, and we're joined by Steve Martini today on the telephone. And Steve, how are you? Good to talk to you. I'm good. How are you? Doing real well, yeah. Congratulations again on on uh, the series uh, of books, uh, which deals with uh, with the legal profession. You, are, you yourself as a lawyer, so uh, I guess they say always write about what you know, right? <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> Talk a little bit about, uh, first of all, maybe people who weren't with us before, Paul Madriani, the uh, main character in, in the series of books. Uh, how would you come up with him? Uh, he was intended, actually, to be a, a character and a, a protagonist in a standalone novel years ago, and the publisher liked it so much, she asked me if I I could do a series, and I said sure, and uh, that's how it uh, that's how it got birth. Uh, and then I've written since then sixteen novels in the series, and uh, uh, three outside the series. I take it back: sixteen novels in all, thirteen Mondriani books, and uh, and three standalone novels. So, yeah. And he is a defense uh, attorney, so uh, you, you have seen many uh, many a trial. That, that, that's it's always great drama. I mean, it's it's been the, that way in movies. The early and, books, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the early books were uh, were set in the courtroom, and uh, basically they were whodunits, uh, uh, probably a little closer to mysteries than uh, than than um, international thrillers. Lately, uh, the last uh, uh, four five books, I guess now, um, uh, have been international thrillers. Uh, they still have a courtroom genesis in terms of the story, but the. Uh, the story unfolds in, in a more international uh, suspense uh, type setting, so they are uh, they are they are, are dead bang thrillers. Yeah. And this one, the enemy inside, uh, involves uh, uh, another lawyer who I won't give too much away because I don't like to do that with novels. But uh, there's there's uh, a manslaughter or, or a trial of involving uh, somebody dying, and then uh, I guess a friend of the uh, uh, Paul Madriani, uh, his daughter, right? Is that is that basically it? Correct. Uh, Paul's daughter is in her 20s. She has a young male friend who she knows who gets involved in an auto accident and he can't remember anything. Okay, He claims he doesn't recall anything after being at a party the night before. <clears throat> and uh, the police find him unconscious at the scene of a, of a two-car collision in the middle of an isolated area near San Diego up in the desert. And um, the woman in the other car is killed. She's burned to death uh, in a fire. And uh, Paul draws the case as a, as a not a benign but a rather routine drunk driving case initially, and it rapidly turns into far more than that uh, when the, the um, toxicology and blood alcohol tests come back and show no alcohol in the individual in the defendant's system, and they can't find any evidence of drugs. Um, Paul theorizes that it might have been a roofie, that is a date break drug that was used on him to knock him out, um, and. Um, the long and short of it is it becomes a deeper mystery when it's discovered that the individual, the, the victim in the other car, was actually a powerful Washington lawyer uh, who was what you would call a money madam. That is, she uh, knew where the political money was because she was in charge of much of it for powerful political figures in New York. I'm sorry, in uh, in Washington. And, um, and the bad uh, fact is that the young man who was driving the other car was a newspaper reporter, actually a news reporter for a news blog in Washington, D.C., and had actually been writing about her or investigating her for some time. And Paul's concerned that if the police find this out, they're going to see this strange connection of these two people in this isolated area in the desert as something more than an accident. So he has to work rapidly to try and find out what was really going on here. Yeah, great. And that's, that's the setup. Great, uh, great plot line there. Olinda Cerna is the character's name, right? That, that Correct. Money lawyer. Great, great name. Yeah. Is that, is that, is that kind of a challenge uh, to come up with different names uh, that are uh, unique? Um, it, can, it can be, yeah. You have to work at it. Yeah, yeah. You have to work at names and try and pick names that people can easily remember, easily pronounce, and um, that may have some um, more subtle meanings uh, if, you, if you read them carefully. Yeah. It could be a, cl a clue in the name. Okay, we won't yeah, it we'll, can we'll be. let the yeah. readers uh, discover that. But well, when, yeah. you, when you sit down to plot out a book, now you've written 16, particularly in, in this particular series, uh, right. how do you go about it? Do you outline it five or six pages, or what, would you get a genesis from a court case, or how do you go about mm -hmm. it? No, you do a, you do a heavily plotted outline. Uh, you want to know where most of the major twists and turns are, where the major plot points are, and how the story ends. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have that in hand, uh, you start your writing. Uh, you send that off to the to the to the publisher. Make sure they don't have any problems with it, and then you you basically start your your manuscript. And um, the, the 
point is that as you write uh, deeper into the manuscript, you'll do more detailed outlining. You'll do scene and chapter outlining as you as you move toward the end of the book uh, to try and keep the story tight and make sure that you you have covered all the major issues that you wanted to cover that you set out to cover. So uh, you do more detailed outlining as you write, but the, but the main storyline is in that initial outline. How about uh, about dialogue? I mean, uh, you being in the legal profession, uh, you know a lot of the, the terminology, so I guess that comes oh, a yeah. little bit easier to you, yeah. but, but is that a challenge, or do you like doing dialogue? I, I like doing dialogue. Dialogue will move a story along, especially if it's crisp and sharp, um, and uh, sometimes humorous, um, <laughs> so it can uh, it can really propel a story. If you're, if you're writing a, a novel and it seems to be dragging, there's two things you can do. You can write, you can, you can shift into, into, into well-written dialogue, and the reader will get caught up in it or you can kill somebody. So if you want to move your story, those are the two devices you use. Yes. The only thing is if you kill somebody too early and later on in the book you may need them again. I guess you've got to figure that out in advance, right? You have to make sure you've got enough characters so you can kill a few. Yeah. Yeah. Well, these types of stories, and you know, we see so many of these legal shows, uh, crime shows on TV, make a great uh, film. Uh, any idea of uh, this one becoming a movie? Do you, do you think of that when you write it? or I guess you don't. Um, time, I don't. Do I try not to think of that, to be honest with you. Um, I have sold two of the books for television miniseries that were actually produced and, and aired, uh, one on CBS, one on NBC. Um, but I, I don't generally write that with a thought in mind. If, I, if they sell, they sell. You know, and um, uh, the storylines I think are, are cinematic. Okay, this one in particular uh, has some has some great cinematic possibilities, uh, especially in the high tech field. Where you, I don't want to give away too much, but some of the technology that's used here and unveiled, it's also very topical. Uh, that is uh, the issues of political corruption. It deals with uh, offshore banking, private bank accounts, uh, politicians who may have private numbered accounts offshore that have never been reported, uh, raising questions as to where the money came from, who paid it, and why. Um, so all of that stuff is, is, is uh, developed in this story and is very topical because of things that are, that are now unfolding in the news. So um, I seem to have a knack for that. I, I, uh, a couple of books ago I wrote about the NSA basically mm -hmm. uh, tapping and gathering huge amounts of metadata um, uh, from people and tap, actually tapping my lawyers' phones and their email systems um, to uh, read their, their email and listen in on conversations. Uh, and I had some readers right back a few years later saying, how did you know this stuff was going on when you wrote this book? fact is, I didn't, but I also knew it was hot topically, and I knew that if the intelligence agencies had the capacity to do this, sooner or later they would, they would abuse that capacity and do it. So, uh, yeah. yeah when, when, you, when you talk about technology in a book, you really have to do your research, because uh, people, people point out, I guess, if it's not accurate, right? So you got to really know the, correct. the research. Correct. Absolutely. Well, yeah. another one of the great uh, Paul Madriani books. This one is called The Enemy Inside. I've been talking with Steve Martini today. And uh, Steve, uh, give out your website. People get a hold of you with a book. Sure. It's stevemartini.com. It'll show you the entire series of books available, as well as all the other materials that were written, including a novella, short stories. And it will lead you to the links for Face Page and for Twitter. Great. It's all there. Steve, pleasure Steve to Martini. talk to you, and uh, congratulations again on the, on the series. Success, and hopefully we can talk to you when the next book comes out. Thanks for joining us. Very good. Thank you. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, please go to dogmilesmedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or Doug Miles Media.